Well, Mr. Ustinov, how nice to see you. You haven't been down Texas way for some while. We've missed you. That's right. There he goes. There he goes. <laughs> no, I haven't been. Uh, no, I haven't been for quite a while. You could do JR. I just now thought about it. You could be JR in the series Dallas. Oh, in the series, yes, which my wife watches. Yes. She's it's very popular in France. Yes, and that's where you live, is it? Well, sometimes. Yes. When you're not on the road. Yes. Yes. Uh, say the name of your character. Hercule Poirot. Nobody says it better. Nobody. Well, I've lived with it for a long time now. <laughs> <laughs> what, what could you tell me that would help me pronounce it better than the way I do? Oh, I think there's a line about that in the script. You must, you must pucker your lips as though about to bestow a kiss. <laughs> I shall practice. Yes. I shall practice. Yes. <laughs> it means, actually, Poirot, but written differently, means a leek. The vegetable. Oh yes. 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 It's written. It's written E A U instead of O T, but it's pronounced exactly like that. Yes, leek soup. Wonderful. Leek soup. Faro soup. Wonderful. <laughs> uh, did you ever meet Agatha Christie? No, never did. Ever hear stories about her, or, you know? No, I read her autobiography, and uh, everybody's very interested to know why, where she disappeared to for two weeks. But I think that shows it's a proof of her eminence. I don't think that two weeks' absence in anybody else would worry anybody. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Mr. Ismanoff, you have said that you live like an Englishman, you think like a Frenchman, and you have the soul of a Russian. I don't know where you got that from. Everybody has told me that I said that, and I'm quite determined that I not only never did, but that. Uh, well, Probably you... those roles are interchangeable. It depends where I am. You know, in, uh, when I'm in Moscow, I uh, think less like a Russian than usual because there are so many real Russians around me. I feel much more Russian in London or New York than I do in Moscow. I feel rather English in uh, Moscow because I haven't got a drop of English blood but a British passport. French, I don't feel, listen, I don't feel it in Paris at all. I must say, in Berlin, I feel slightly French. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I read about you, now, if you, t if you tell me this isn't true, I'm going to throw out that whole press kit and not believe any of it. But one of the things I read about you, Mr. Ustinov, is mm. that you and David Niven were together in World War II, served together, or somehow... I was his orderly, because it was the only way they could get in the British Army to keep a private and a colonel together. And since I was writing a script for him, there was no other way. So I sat there uh, writing the script, and David sat near the door, because we had to work in the Ritz Hotel in London because of a shortage of space. And when he saw a general coming across, coming along the corridor, he would shout, KV, and I would drop the script like a hot brick and start polishing his belt until the general had gone when I resumed writing the script. Those were romantic days. <laughs> <laughs> but the two of you, if we were to believe that David Niven is as wild as he says he is and as he writes, you must have had some hilarious times together. Yes, it was, it was very amusing. Uh, he was a marvelous colonel because he gave me a pass which uh, I occasionally saw military police who uh, thought they'd got me and uh, I presented them with this pass and their faces fell because the pass said <clears throat> this man may do, go anywhere and do anything uh, at his discretion in the course of his duties. And uh, one of the military policemen said something which I can't repeat here but he said I was a lucky mm -mm. <laughs> bleep bleep. <laughs> bleep bleep. And I said not only am I lucky bleep bleep but I've got David Niven's signature. <laughs> 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 With yeah. the two of you fighting the Battle of Britain, do you sometimes wonder that it turned out as good as it did? No, I'm vain enough to think that if they'd heeded my advice, uh, the war might have been over a little sooner. <laughs> I was a private for four and a half years, so nobody really listened to what I said. But it made it easy to get out of the army at the end, because they didn't think they had such an investment in me. So I came out and directed a film for the Air Ministry. And what they, was it like? 
Well, it was a big success. They, they had no record of my inadequacy in the army. Uh, <laughs> so I came out uh, and uh, we actually had to shop st uh, stop shooting for one day in order to allow me to be demobilized. <laughs> it was extraordinary, very expensive. The Oscars will be coming out pretty soon, March yeah. the 29th. You have two Oscars. Yes. Spartacus, Top Cappy. My God, what a memory. And, uh, well, you see, I read a lot. Oh. <laughs> some, some of it, it turns out not to be true. But um, how do you see the Oscar race this time? What's going to be best picture, do you think? I have no idea because I haven't seen them all, and therefore I really am unqualified to talk about it. I imagine that Hank Fonda will get the men's thing. Uh, I haven't seen Golden Pond, but, I mean, he's such a marvelous actor, he should have won it at least twice in the past, I think. So those sort of wrongs are bound to be rectified. That's really the purpose of the Oscars. Um, I don't really think it's quite fair to link the performances or the victories to specific films. I think it's very often, like when Liz Taylor won it for Butterfield 8, nobody would pretend that that's the greatest film she ever did. But she won it that year because she should have won it earlier. Well, so I think it's probably Hank's year. I think so, too. Mm. It's your year every year, Mr. Ustinov. Ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> there he goes again. Do you have something you want to say in Texanese before we, we sign off here? No, except sitting here, I feel that I'm running for office. Well, I'll say that if you are, you're going to win. Well, I'm going to try and come in the landslide. <laughs> All right. Good to see you, Mr. Ustinov. Very Ustinoff. nice to see you. Take care. Thank you very much. <laughs> Okay. Now, you want... Yes, Steve. Okay, thanks. <laughs> what a consummate <laughs> actress. I've never seen anything like it, but nothing there at all. <laughs> just out of, just fantastic. And now I know the gravity has been struck. And now it's starting to light again. Just a transitory cloud over okay. Austin. <laughs> All <right. laughs> okay. All right, questions. And you don't need to answer. Okay. All right, what is the secret to pronouncing the character you play in Evil Under the Sun? You haven't spent four years in a Walloon <laughs> school. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, continuing. Did you ever meet Agatha Christie? What do you think Agatha Christie was like? Okay. We read that you have said of yourself that you live like an Englishman, you think like a Frenchman, and you have the soul of a Russian. I shall never believe anything in the press kit again. I'll just throw the whole thing away. Okay. You and David Niven served together, worked together, had some liaison during World War II. What was that all about? We're just good friends. <laughs> what, what were your duties then, working with David Divin during the war? David Niven ghosted Poirot's autobiography, which was <laughs> called The Moon is a Walloon. <laughs> you have two Oscars for Spartacus and Top Cappy. I read a lot. I read a lot, Mr. Stenoff. Who do you think is going to win this year? What do you think will be best picture this year? Now, before we sign off, would you like to say something in Texanese for us? I've never seen such a, te a technical accomplishment as you fine ladies uh, regaled us with this <laughs> afternoon. I want to make that clear. Okay, that should do it. <laughs>
Wonderful. It's incredible. I've never seen anything like it.